oh, just remembered I need to do that. Oh, and my camera's frozen. That's always a good start. That's better. Oh, apart from that, I need to twizzle you that way a bit. Yay, we're live. Excellent. Let me just check. Oh, I'm going to have to shut the blind, aren't I? I'll do two things at once. Well, three things. Walking, logging into my phone, and shutting a window blind. Oh, right. Hello, is anybody there going to talk to anybody here? Is kind of where I am. Uh, there we are. Hopefully I am live. Am I live? Fingers crossed. Yes. Hurrah. Good. Hi, Nora. Hi, Candy. Good grief. You're early. So I have to say I'm even more disorganized than usual this morning because my computer decided, hi Rene, decided it was going to do an update just as I was logging in. So there we go, coffee. Hello Claire. Hello Jan. Thank you for my lovely Christmas present. You're obviously trying to get me completely drunk. I only say that because I'm just finishing off some bits. Um, I say that because Jan very kindly gave me some um, gin, as in flavoured gin, which she is becoming a bit of an expert on. Uh, but she gave me some for my birthday as well. So I've now had a lot of Jan's gin and I'm very grateful for it, particularly at the moment. Uh, I'm just die cutting some sentiments ready for our live and then I will be concentrating properly so who else have we got here we've got Lorraine Rene has kindly shared B is with us K is with us so let me know how your Christmas was. We had my Christmas, my, my Christmas. Who can and can't be in a support bubble. is allowed in a support bubble because he's living on his own uh, so he was up with us which was lovely and he's had his first coronavirus jab which is even better he was a little tired after it but other than that was basically good they're lovely Jan we're slowly working our way through them um, so right while people are morning happy Christmas a quiet one here Absolutely, Lorraine. Thank goodness for Zoom. We Zoomed with my brother and sister-in-law uh, on Christmas morning. Um, so that was good. So, yes, we had a super time. Um, all good at this end. Um, but yes, so father had his first coronavirus jab on the Sunday. So his next one is on the 10th, I think. Um, and then he should then he has to leave it from a week um, and then he should have a reasonable amount of immunity but we have told him to still act as if he hasn't uh, because that's better but yes so it's all happening you the re restrictions have eased in Victoria have they yeah they're getting worse here uh, we've got this new form of uh, a virus which seems to spread quickly. Um, I have to say there's been some interesting reactions 
in the rest of Europe about it. Um, they seem to think that we created it ourselves. Uh, we actually um, have the best uh, labs for um, looking at the genomes for these things. Um, and there is a suspicion that actually it came from France, which if you remember has been spiralling, um, that it came from France because it first appeared in the UK in Kent, which tends to suggest that may be where it came from. It may be coincidence, but um, not convinced that we created this particular version ourselves. You've got snow today, Claire. Um, we were meant to have snow yesterday and we haven't. Sorry, my hair's... I washed my hair this morning and it's quite frosty, so my hair's a bit... Uh, Christmas cards for next year already, Louise. I think that's not a bad idea, actually. I might have to join you with that one, although we've got uh, celebration and things to get through first. So, um, as some of you have already been sharing, let's get that bit done. So... If you share this live either from YouTube or Facebook, well, this obviously is the Facebook live, um, then you will be entered into a draw for a prize, which I haven't actually decided what it is yet. I will grab something in a minute. Uh, it's been a morning. Um, if you're in the UK, then you get that physical prize. If you're overseas and you win, um, you get to pick one of the tutorial bundles that are on my website other than the mega bundles. So um, a bit of snow in Wales. The floods. I haven't been out today, Jan. Um, so the road between our, our village and the next village uh, flooded a couple of days ago uh, when we had there was torrential rain, particularly up north. And because we're on the Thames, we then get everybody else's floodwaters. And also, um, the road is on a floodplain, so if it's getting, if the water's getting high in Oxford or Abingdon, they open the flood, the sluice gates to let some of the water come onto our floodplain. The problem is that our floodplain is currently so waterlogged it's not absorbing much, um, much water. So yes, I haven't been out, Jan. Yesterday it hadn't really dropped much. Um, I think it's going to take a while. Um, so yes, yeah, so if you share the video, then you will be entered into the prize draw, physical prize if you're in the UK, and um, the one of the tutorial bundles if you're not. Now, live. So I'm recording this at roughly 11 o'clock on the 29th of December. I say recording, this is live. If you see a live um, button in the top right hand corner of your screen in red, uh, it'll say live, then it's a live, you're watching live. If there is no red live and you're watching on Facebook, you're getting it, you're watching on catch up. So it's not live. So I will not be reacting to your comments. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, it's a Facebook live replay. So not live. Um, I say this every week. I still get the odd comment that says as if I'm live on YouTube. Having said that, few notices so I've got if you're on my mailing list you'll already have seen this um, but I've got some new a new schedule coming up for celebration so um, hello Fiona you've already started making your Christmas cards for next year great stuck in tier four yeah most of the UK is in tier four we're in two, tier four we went from two on Christmas day to four on Boxing Day not that it makes any difference to my husband and I because we don't tend to go out that much anyway um, so anyway morning from Devon not such a good Christmas here you've broken a bone in your foot ow um, and you hadn't had a tipple. Hello, Nemony. Um, I broke a, I've broken both my feet at various points. Well, actually, I broke one. And then while I was protecting the that one, I um, broke the other one. Um, anyhow, it is very painful and very easy to do. The first time I broke my foot was running to move my car, which I'd parked in a short term car park when I was working at a local town when we where we lived near London 
um, and it was already two hours overdue on the uh, short stay so you know running was gonna make a difference um, anyway I was running um, I had not high heels kind of inch and a half heels on um, hit a funny bit on the pavement twisted my ankle and thought that's all I had done until um, I mean it was very uncomfortable but I thought I just twisted an ankle until about two o'clock the following morning when I woke myself up screaming and I'd broken my f a bone in my foot nothing they can do about it all I would say is um, keep 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 it up um, and put some frozen peas on it in the bag anyway so new schedule coming up specifically for celebration but it may go through after that as well so the new catalogue and the celebration brochure goes live on the 5th of January in case any of you have not got that date in your heads um, remember there are two celebrations this year so we've got January February so it's only two months and then we've got July and August so we've got four months in total but they're split um, and there is only one lot of uh, items in the certainly in the first celebration don't know about the second one yet so you get the choice of what's in the celebration catalogue or what's in the celebration catalogue. That's a good idea, Lorraine. Make your a friend's Christmas card when you're making their birthday card. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, chick. Absolutely, Wendy. I'll come on to that. So, um, January, the calendar for January. The 3rd of January is the deadline for anyone wanting my product shares. Um, this, is, this is a quarter paper share. There are 108 pieces of paper in it. And uh, they're all cut six by six. Um, and it comes in at £25. I'm not charging postage. Um, UK only, because I only work in the UK. If you want a quarter share of the ribbons... Then that's 1125 uh, if you want half share then it's 50 pounds for a 6 by 12 paper other than the dandy garden which is 6 by 6 um, and 22 pound 50 for the ribbons they're already going so if you want them um, do hop on board for those sooner rather than later just drop me an email uh, if you're not on my mailing list and um, if you're on my mailing list there's a PayPal button um, otherwise, drop me an email at liz.uil at artlover.com and I'll send you an invoice. As I say, no postage. Um, so it's literally just charging you for the product. And my time comes free. Uh, so 3rd of January is the deadline for that because I need to do the maths on the 4th and then order on the 5th. Um, I will be doing on at 3 p.m. on the 6th of January, I'll be doing a live celebration kickoff event. Um, and we'll have lots of samples <laughs> once I've made them um, and there'll be a shopping special as well so that's the third at uh, 3 p.m. on the 6th I will put this on my Facebook page um, so that it's all there 10th of January will be the deadline for ordering the birthday class um, and that's also for uh, payment as well so not only do you have to order by the 10th you need to have paid by the 10th the details of that will be going out very soon. Then I'm introduced. That's my usual um, big product based class. Um, then I'm introducing a mini class. Uh, so for just a few cards uh, and that will be the deadline for that will be the 24th of January. And that's a Valentine slash friendship class, because for those of you who are in the UK, you will know we don't really do Valentine's or like. Sorry, I just need to change something on my screen we don't do valentines like um the us does valentines we send one valentine's card maybe two but single figures uh, because they're going to your their loved ones anyway so that i'm going to have it either as a valentine or a friendship so that's the 24th then there will then there's dates for february and march for those as well but in addition during celebration and i may extend these if they are popular there will be cra live crafting every Tuesday at 11 o'clock here. So this one, 
then fingers crossed I can work out how to do it properly. YouTube every Thursday at 3 p.m. and also every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Those are all UK time, so there's going to be lots of crafting. The sessions are going to be smaller, but they will there will be more of them. So that is that. What else do I need to tell you? Apart from the fact I haven't designed any cards yet. I've got some in my brain, but I haven't finalised them. Um, my computer decided that this morning was going to be the day to go on strike, um, do a refresh, do a maintenance check and stuff. So it was, I could finally actually get it, get into Facebook without it crashing about two minutes before we went live. Happy day. So I think we'll flip you down and then we will get started. So let's get my very tatty, very not sticky piece of washi tape to stop you being too dizzy. Having already made you dizzy once by forgetting to um, flip you initially. Whoops. Hang on. Let's get this done. Get that done. Remove. Let it settle. And then just. Yes, I did manage to do the prize draw, but that's about it. Thank you, Jennifer. So, oh yes, and so Wendy has talked about, should she sh say hey chick? So those of you who have already got my the catalogues that I've sent you, and if you haven't, and you think you should be getting one from me, please let me know, because, I mean, it could be that they're stuck in the post. Some have arrived, um, so I'm hoping that they will all begin to arrive. Um, but if you think you should be getting a catalogue from me, and that basically is anyone who has shopped with me in the last year, roughly, um, do let me know if it hasn't arrived. Um, what day of the week are we on? Tuesday. If it hasn't arrived by tomorrow, so by your usual post tomorrow, let me know and I will see if I can get um, another one out. I don't have a huge number spare, but I will see what I can do. Um, and I need your UK address. Louise is liking the per pretty perennials. Yeah, not my bag, I'm afraid. Not my bag. It's too, it's too similar to a set we had when I first joined. Anyway, so hey, check. So in the new catalogue, you will see that there is a set called Birthday Chick. Um, let me just check what it is called. Um, I can't show you the catalogue, even if you've already got it. It's not allowed. So I'm being good. It is called... It is called... I'm sure it's Hey Birthday Chick or something like that. Hmm... I can't find it. How bizarre. Anyway, there's the one with the chickens in it. Um, and I'm sure it is Hey Birthday Chick or something like Oh, it is Hey Birthday Chick. Um, on page 52, if you have your catalogue. Um, if you have been with Stamping Up, as in you've been, you know, you've known what they've been up to for any time soon, uh, for any length of time, you will know that one celebration there was a set called Hey Chick, which was phenomenally popular. Um, I had about five sets and I've given them away. Um, and the reason I say that is because it's coming back. Um, it will be coming back with dyes, as will the Hey Birthday Chick, um, in February. So if you want the Hey Birthday Chick, I would hold off until um, February because then you've got the option of getting the dies as well. If you are, if you want it sooner than that, then demonstrators can pre-order that. I think from the launch of the new catalogue. So if you join, you'll be able to then pre-order it. In fact, you could, 
you would be able to put it in your pre or in your starter kit once the pre-order for it has gone live for demonstrators. Don't have any more details yet other than that. But there we go. So, uh, so that's that. Right. Okay. So I spotted on. I think it was Pinterest. Um, something that someone had done with the ooh, what's it called? What's it called? True Love Designer Series paper. I love this paper. It's black and white. I did my the spot challenge for last week. I've not been able to do it this week. Um, will that be in the new catalogue? Louise, which which will what be in the new catalogue? Hey chick or hey birthday chick? Or the bundles? If you could give me a little more information in your message, that would be good. Anyway, so this is the one I did for last week's The Spot. Um, including, so this is from the die set that goes with, that goes with, bear with me. Oh. Would that I was organised. Uh, can't find it. Anyway, one of the new stamp sets. <laughs> Not that one, or that one, or that, or that, or that, or that, or that. That's weird. Oh, there it is. Oh. Put it somewhere else. So it's from the Forever All and Always bundle. New catalogue just this minute arrived. Great! Excellent! Glad it's arrived, Margaret. The Hey Chick Bundles. Um, the Hey Birthday Chick is in the catalogue. The bundles, read the read this morning's um, update on the demo website. Um, so yes, so I've from the Love Always, I have managed to die cut you, which is the U, the Y from Always, the O from Love, and the beginning of the W from always, and I've just layered them together. So do just have a look at, you know, don't just think that you can't do th other things with your die cuts, because you can. And then I fussy cut the, so there's dies for the love and always and for the shadow, and I just fussy cut the, um, the U. But this is great, this paper, because it's black and white, and it's generic on the other side. Yeah, so it's this morning's update, Louise. Um, it talks about it. It's only a couple of lines. It's very short. So the backs, the back sides of the papers have got these lovely um, geometric, you know, generic, and then we've got the pattern on the front. Uh, so it's great if you want to colour, um, because you can. So this is a part pack because I've already been using it. So I spotted that someone had taken these, fussy cut them and coloured them. Um, I need some green. Uh, I'm going to go very pale for that. And, and I've also stamped and die cut the many messages, which is a bundle. You get the die to go with it. Um, so I've stamped and die cut those. I've done them black on white and white on black. So this is both sets. Oh, and I must give you an update on that. Um, sorry, something's just gone in my brain. It's in my brain and will probably not come out the other end. Um, so still coming with these. So this is just two passes of the stamp set and the die. Uh, and I'm leaving out this stars and things. So let's get all of these out. Um, the, the stamp is quite fine, so it's not great for heat embossing. Some of them have been more successful than others. But it's a great way of having lots of sentiments ready to go. Uh, and it covers pretty much every occasion. Um, so, yes. So all of that lot comes from the one stamp. Um, 
I would highly recommend the Stamparatus as your way of stamping it. Um, now, while I remember, white. So if you've been following my uh, website and Facebook and all that good stuff, you may have spotted that Whisper White is retired. Fiona, white on black is one of my favourite things, particularly when you're using black and white paper because it makes it stand out. So, yes, I'm going to start colouring while I'm talking. Um, so you may have spotted, I'm using, by the way, So Saffron and Soft Seafoam. Uh, you may have spotted that Whisper White is retiring, and I'm just doing these two sets of flowers. Um, the manufacturer of Whisper White has gone bust uh, because of COVID. Um, oh, isn't it quiet when the heater stops? Um, I've not had the heating on in my craft room all over Christmas, which means it's quite cold in here. Um, so yes, so Whisper White has been retired. So this is the dark, so saffron, I'm just colouring in um, the sort of centery bits, the bits that will be in shadow a bit. Um, so they've gone bust. They're uh, stamping up, have found a new manufacturer who has a similar but not identical process. Um, to the original one so it is slightly different paper uh, but it has been stress tested by demonstrators the creative team um, all sorts of people so they are reasonably comfortable that it is going to be a good alternative unfortunately it is not currently available so um you may have seen that there is a limit now on what ordering Whisper White products. Uh, some of them have already sold out, but you can only order in any one order two of any one Whisper White item. So two sets of envelopes, two pieces, uh, two packs of Whisper White card, two packs of thick Whisper White card, etc., etc. Um, just so that it's fair for everyone. Now, obviously, as demonstrators, we get through quite a lot. Um, so it probably is going to have more of an impact on us than it will on customers. Uh, but we do not currently have a date for when Basic White will be available. Um, as soon as I have that information, it will go in my newsletter. Um, but at the moment, I don't have that information. And we had a leader's call last night and um, the folks at head office who take that call didn't have a date. They have asked for one and they've said they will. But it's not even available in North America at the moment. So it's got to get from North America to Germany and then to the UK um, in orders. So just so you're aware, it will be a while, I'm afraid. So soft sea foam, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the kind of middle of the leaves in soft sea foam. Um, so yes, white is going to be interesting. I think we're going to be using or I'm what I'll probably do is use more colored fortunate position and I had no idea that this was just me to a certain target in sales in November um, so I put in a last minute order for quite a lot of whisper white and quite a lot of whisper white envelopes so I do have some in stock for my own use um, so yes, I was quite lucky that way. So I'm just going to fussy cut these. You know, I love my fussy cutting. So I'm going to whiz round the outside first, and then I will fussy cut and make our first card. 
So strangely, even though we had the whole pandemic um, and most of my family were in tier four by Christmas Day, even if they weren't before then. So my brother and sister-in-law were in tier four before, Chris, before Boxing Day. They, the plan had been that they would come up uh, on Boxing Day, but obviously that didn't happen. So we did a clandestine uh, Christmas present swap in a car park, um, both wearing masks, both putting items into the other one's boot, as in the car boot, so that they could then just sit there and de-viral, assuming that either of us had the virus. Um, so, yes. Um, so apart from them not being able to join us on Boxing Day, actually, we had the same Christmas we would have had, even if it had been normal times, um, because as far as my family is concerned, it is just my brother, sister-in-law and niece, and then my father. Um, it was only ever going to be us. So, yeah, we kind of had the normal what we would have had Christmas. Um, so that was not so bad for us. Uh, we might have met up with friends a bit more in the lead up to Christmas, I guess. Uh, we may have gone out for a meal when my father was here. Um, but yeah, as it happens, not much what that we would have done. So um, I'm assuming Zoom was quite a big thing for most of you. Who had a Zoom or other type family call on Christmas Day? And I will now wait while Facebook lets you have that question and then hopefully we'll get some answers. <laughs> But uh, surprise, surprise, we do still have quite a lot of turkey left. Um, so we're having turkey and bubble and squeak quite a lot. For those of you who are not aware what bubble and squeak is, because um, not all of you necessarily will be, because uh, I think it is a particularly British thing. Um, it's basically mashed potato and either cabbage or, in our case, Brussels sprouts. And you mash them all together, so you cook them, uh, you mash them all together, and then you fry what's left. It's really great if you put lots of pepper in. Um, and if you've got turkey dripping, which is a thing, by the way, with fat on the top, then you fry it in that fat. Uh, our dripping this year didn't have much fat, so uh, I've just been frying it in goose fat, and it's yummy! So, am I the only person that does that? You have that every Boxing Day. It is, yeah, we do. It is just the yummiest thing in the world. Um, it's a bit like there's a thing in the Netherlands, is it, or is it Belgium? That's, is it Stomp? Something like that, which I think has carrot in it as well but it's basically mashed potato with vegetables in um, but the peculiarity of the bubble and squeak is that it's fried you got you're used to christmas calls are you candy yeah you would be if you're if you're spread around the world did a zoom christmas lunch with your parents after a doorstep delivery to them and everything was still hot brilliant family zoom quiz yeah my brother and sister-in-law had one of those yeah tier four sucks hey tier five's coming new zealand canada and all parts of the uk well done lorna big family absolutely that's the thing we're seeing more people than um than we would normally I must get my heater back on Oh, my heater is... Oh, there it is. I thought my heater had decided to die. Bubble and Squeak is absolutely the perfect thing. You did a Zoom for the 
for the present opening. You open your presents after lunch as well, Nemony. We do. I, I thought we were peculiar. I mean, we are. But I thought we were even more peculiar than I thought we were. Uh, right, so I'm going to actually use the back of this paper, I think. Or is that a bit busy? That might be a bit busy. Let's find a darker one. Pretty normal Christmas day, apart from not being able to go to the pub. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like we didn't. We did have a church service, um, which was small but beautifully formed, as they say. Games on Zoom. Ha! Potato, cabbage, and ham, and fry it together. Oh, nice. Right, so I think I'm going to use the back of this. In fact, let's use this offcut as the main thing. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to grab some black. I hope. Oh, actually, no. I'm going to grab so saffron because so saffron is the colour that I've used for my for my colouring, I'm going to use so saffron as my as my um, mat, and then I'm going to have I got a basic black card base? I do. Hurrah and la la. Right, so basic black card. So scored, and then just um, folded in as cut in half. So I score first and fold second. I have. Yet again, lost my other bone folder. Oh, there it is on my desk. So I'm going to I'm going to pop that there. But this I'm going to cut down a bit, I think. In fact, I'm tempted to cut it down quite a lot. Um, all right, let's see. Let's see where we are. So this measures three and three quarters. I think I'm going to take it down to three and a half. So if that's three and three quarters, that would normally be five and a half. So five and a quarter by three and a half. And for those of you who are in North America, I will convert these to your measurements when this goes onto my website, which will be tomorrow. So I'm going to have this there. I'm not I'm tempted to go skew with. Yeah, I think I might go skew with just because I can. So I'm going to start with my adhesive because we all know I like liquid adhesive. So that's then going to go at an angle. So what I'm doing is making sure that the corners are at the edge. So can you see the corners are at the edge? And then this I'm going to have, again, the corners going to the edge, but straight to the black. Um, if I can, actually I can't. <laughs> I'm going to have it skew with on the so saffron, but not on the um not on to the card and i've just realized my seal is over here i was making christmas cards over in the house so or christmas tags rather over in the house so um took my seal over because i was trying to save on heating in this room uh it's electric underfloor heating which is lovely but it's not cheap. Um, and with my father here, we do tend to ramp up the heating anyway. So, um, so yes, I was trying to be reasonably, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I was trying to work to a budget, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So we've got the, mm, decide which way up those are that way. that way I think 
and then this one we can have here and let's see what have we got happy anniversary no thank you for being you just a card to say hello that might be quite nice actually that might be quite nice although I might prefer it in white because this is quite black I'm gonna go white thrifty thank you thank you Jennifer economical that'll do you'd think I had a brain would that I did right so let's grab some dimensionals there we go I seem to have lots of small dimensionals open and almost no no larger dimensionals but that's fine now because this is paper not um card i'm going to use white although if it had been a stamped image i might have used black uh, purely because it's on a black background but with the with the um paper being white i don't want the dimensionals to show through which if they were black might happen so just put some of these edge bits on how are we doing time wise gosh it's 20 to 12 already so that I'm gonna have there and then this one, oh, I've got an actual dimensional there. I'm thinking that this paper might be one of the ones big birthday class. Haven't quite decided. Um, I may use an annual paper. The reason for that is that um, uh, it will be stock levels. So it's, it's that kind of how are the stock levels going on new stuff. So I might use annual paper for the birthday class. Presents and a full Christmas dinner tomorrow, Wendy. Would good grief. I'm tempted to have that overlapping. Yeah. In fact, I might even go there. I don't like little bits of, in inverted commas, white space. Now I'll go there. Far too many dimensionals on the back, but hey, there we go. Or far too much dimensional on the back. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go there, I think. And then we need a little bit of bling. So let me have a look. I, you know what I'm going to be using, of course, my favourite, my favourite. I've got some of the new bling. Let me have a look. Well, I thought I did. There we go. So I have got, these are the opals. I wonder what they'd look like. Hmm, no. Don't think so. So the um, the opals are from a stamp set or a suite that I think will be Jan's favourite in the whole catalogue because it's sea and sand, and Jan does rather like sea and sand. She's got a place down in Cornwall. Um, that is a holiday home or a holiday let um, under normal circumstances, possibly not at the moment. 
Um, but yes, I can see that that would be quite a popular stamp set. So it's just a subtle amount of bling. Bubble and squeak soup. Ooh, that's an interesting thought. So yes, you can see there's just a little bit of bling. Now, it will. this card will need a liner, but I'm working on the premise that half a sheet of basic black and a quarter of a sheet of whisper white is probably the best way to go rather than lots of whisper white until we can get white back. Oh, I need some more dimensionals. Oh, there's a mini as well. That's better. Big dimensionals. Right. Okay, so that's that card. Uh, now I need to design something else. So that's number one for today. Don't need that little, well, I might need that little bit. Okay, so. Ooh, I wonder. So. So, so, so. And the, um, the Forever and Always does go with this paper beautifully. I'm not... Seashells, absolutely, Jan. Um, I'm not investing in a lot of Valentine stuff because, as I say, in the UK, it's kind of not a thing. Um, so you won't be seeing much in the way of Valentines from me. Ooh, that's pretty. So is that, actually. Ooh, ooh, I've had a thought with this one. Right, so, again, this is multi-pattern, black and white, both sides. I'm going to trim this down a wee bit. So, I think I'll take a quarter of an inch off my usual measurements. And I'm going to grab something very bright. Um, and... Right, so we're going very bright. We've done very subtle and now we're going to do very bright. Uh, and I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper because I can see bleeding coming on. Right, Magenta Madness and Just Jade. Yes, this is bright. If you don't like bright, look away now. Because what I'm going to do is go very bright. So I like these big flowers. Now, the thing you have to remember with paper is that it's going to bleed more readily than card. So be careful. Don't do what I do, dust done, and cover over some, colour over something you didn't want to colour. But there we go. Some of the some of the design is not the easiest to see, but we'll do. So black and white paper you don't always want to have as black and white, and it's one of the huge advantages of black and white is in if you make it a colour, you can make it any colour you like. And I'm going to go really bright because I can then make it pop with the black. Uh, I don't know why I was careful around there because that's going to be magenta madness too. So all of that is Magenta Madness. I'm not going to colour everything. I'm going to colour these. The cabbage. In fact, it could well be a cabbage. One of those decorative cabbages. I'm doing really well at not staying inside the line. But it's fine. Definitely not staying inside the line. It's because I'm using the pointy end, as in the brush tip end. Mm. 
So who is a fan of Magenta Madness and who, frankly, could give it a wide berth? I always thought that I liked Melon Mambo because it was bright, bright, bright. I do like Melon Mambo because it's bright, bright, bright. But oh, this is so much brighter. cabbage. These are cabbages. Cabbage roses maybe. So magenta madness, yes or no? You love it, Candy. Yep. Good. Anyone else? I think it is a bit of a Marmite. I think it is a love-hate. Because it is very bright. And strangely, I'm not a great pink person. Belinda likes it. Jan doesn't. Okay. So this isn't a card for Jan then. We were on our last team call. We were talking about favourite colours and things. Um, and we kind of decided that Mint Macaron, which is one of Jan's favourite colours, is almost a neutral. You can use it either. Cherry's still out for Jennifer. Um, you can either use it with blue or green and it will take that on. Lorna loves it. And I don't think we need to shade because, and this is the light, I would hasten to add. You like anything pink, Nemony. I'm, as I say, I'm not a great pink person. I'd rather have a bold pink than a subtle pink. I'm not a great... So Blushing Bride doesn't do anything for me at all. Horrible colour. Rarely use it. Although having said that, the new Blushing Bride ribbon and the Blushing Bride foil are both gorgeous. So this is Just Jade, and I'm using Just Jade purely because it's an ink colour. So the ink colours will always work together. Depends on what you're colouring, Margaret. Okay. So while I'm doing this colouring, do remember, if you haven't already shared, you can do that. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, you can share on both YouTube and Facebook. In fact, if you share on both, you get two entries. So all I'm doing is picking out this sort of round leaf. I have no idea what it is. It's probably an honesty, but who knows? But I'm just picking out just a little bit. What's quite useful is it's also where I tend to, I have tended to over colour the pink. So I can use the Just Jade to make it look more inside the lines. So up here. Ooh, and I want to talk to you about gold flakes. So I don't know if you've seen in the new catalogue, we've got gilding flakes. They're gorgeous. Uh, I just want to give you a tip. A, don't use them if, you're, if you've got a cold. Really bad idea if you sneeze into them. Um, but I do want to give you a tip on those. In fact, a couple of tips. I'll do a proper... Well, that's a thought. I could do some proper tips later in the week, couldn't I? Right, we've got some more down here, and then I'm going to call this coloured, because otherwise you will be watching paint dry almost literally. Let's check there aren't any more round ones. Oh, no, there are. So gilding flakes have been around for a while. 
They're nothing specifically new. They kind of went out of fashion. I had lots. I may still have lots. Um, but they are gorgeous. And a little does go a very long way. Right, so I'm going to leave that to kind of settle. So, gilding flakes. Oops. So this is a tub with some gilding flakes in. Let's get that out of the way. Um, I highly recommend, let me open this over the top. This is the pot that it comes in. It is very light, very, very light. And a little goes a very long way. So my top, absolute top tip is decant some, but not all, of your flakes into a big pot and then have a dedicated sponge. And the reason I say that is you're going to want to be able to rub the flakes away from whatever it is you are using it on. Um, there is the heat and stick, which I have to say smells disgusting. Um, it's got a de very definite smell, but you can also use it on or with um, Tombow. Let me grab a scrap of something. That'll, oops, that'll do. So, piece of basic black. That's away. So I'm going to get my Tombow and I just thought I'd do this while I'm doing other things. So I don't know if I can use this as a pen but let's see if I can. That's not the best signature in the world. It's a bit a bit thick but I'm going to just add some Tombow to this black card. Spread it out quite thinly and I'm going to just leave it to dry. Um, while I get on with other things. Uh, so I'm just playing patterns. Playing patterns. So I'm going to leave that to dry whilst we carry on with other things. I'm going to put it on the floor in front of the heater to see if that speeds it up. Right, so our coloured cardstock and I'm going to, um, well, I'm going to grab some coloured cardstock. I think that's, a, this I think is a, hard, a quarter sheet. Um, and then... Magenta Madness card. So I'm just going to check what size this is. Yeah, so this is a quarter sheet. And I'm going to cut it down from a quarter sheet to my usual first layer, which is five and five eighths by three and seven eighths, but the measurements will be on my website tomorrow. And I also want that. So I'm going to have that there. This I'm just going to have over the top. And then I'm going to wrap this round and put a sentiment on. So Let's start with, ooh, there's something else. Sorry, my brain is, my brain is running. My brain is running with ideas. Not perfect. 
perfectly straight, but near enough. So this I'm going to have down there. Let's get rid of that. Do I want a bow? I might, I might put a tie in it. Right, so to attach this, as ever, I'm going to use Seal Plus. Line up my mat on the grid paper. Add some Seal Plus both sides and then just go up a bit actually I'll go that way add my ribbon just by lining up on my grid paper Two, three, four. Doesn't look straight. One, two, three. That's why. It's because I haven't counted properly. This is where, I mean, you know, color coordination or color coordination. Just saying. I'm tempted to pop that. No, I won't. Right, what I find is it's quite useful to then put some more Seal Plus over your ribbon so it's encased, uh, particularly if you're going to do what I've done, what I'm going to do, which is attach with liquid adhesive. Um, it just means that you know that your ribbon is encased in. Ad oops, adhesive. So that goes on there. And then we'll tie that in a little knot as a fake. I tied to, oh, for crying out loud. Um, so I'll do this as a fake. Go and then just trim at the ends at a jaunty angle. So we've got that little bit of detail. Pop my ribbon away, always a plan. Um, and then we need a sentiment, so let's see. Happy. Ooh, I think we'll do just want to say, and then on the inside, I can have a whatever I want happy birthday or whatever. Now, I'm using this set, but obviously, if you wanted to replicate these cards, you could use um, itty bitty greetings, things like that. Any sentiments would be perfect. And you could use mini dimensionals rather than the edge piece of the big dimensionals. They, I haven't ordered them yet, but there are some amazing looking black um, embellishments. This are a matte black, which would be perfect on here. So we've just got that little sentiment down at the bottom there. And again, I think I'm going to grab, if I haven't buried them, my, which apparently I have, my, where have my embellishments gone? Ah, they're underneath dimensionals. I'm going to go for the um, the kind of opaque ones this time and just so we'll have one there, one just, oh, we could have, no, 
Ooh, that's quite nice. I do like my triangles. So one just there. And then we'll take another one up there. So we've got a little, a little triangle. It'll be better in the photographs. Uh, but we've got this little triangle of embellishments. So that's our next card done. Let me put the lid on that. See how it's getting there. This needs a bit of a help. I'm just going to blast it a bit with my heat gun. Um, cover your ears. does actually make the glue bubble a bit. <laughs> Trusty cheese board. Hello, Pam. Right, so I'll leave that for a little bit longer just to see if we can get that to dry a bit more. Or shall I give it a go? Let's give it a go. I'm going to be brave. This should be left a bit longer, but I do want to show you this. And we are getting to that point where we need to be doing prize draws and things. So let me just get rid of... Hey, Barbara. Right, so for those of you who have just joined, this is just basic black card, which I've scribbled uh, Tombow on. It's not dry enough yet, uh, really, but I just want to... This is the point where you need to make sure if you want to blow your nose, sneeze, or anything along those lines, do it before you open the box. So this is just a tiny amount of the new flakes with... Tombow. I'm trying not to speak because otherwise it will blow. Right, so once you've got your flakes where they're meant to be, you then want to rub them away. And this is where I say a stamping sponge or a little bit of stamping sponge is perfect. Then put, you can put your lid on. And I'm just going to flick this to get the other bits off. And grab a paintbrush. This is a soft bristle brush. So, as I say, the, the glue isn't really dry enough yet. Uh, but it's done not a bad job. But you can see that you can use your Tombow instead of the heat and stick. Um, let's find another piece of and let's use love. Now, someone yesterday was asking me about, and this was on a YouTube video, an older YouTube video, about the rubber that I use to um, season my stamps. Now, I've had this for at least five years. I said I didn't know what it was. It's actually a Mapid, but it's 
but it's also a Zenoa. I don't know. Anyway, it's just a it's just a white eraser. Um, so it's yeah, just a white eraser, and it just gets that film off your new stamps. So now. I have a debate as to whether or not it's better to use a, um, an embossing buddy or not when you're using heat and stick. And I haven't quite, the jury's out. So let's, let's do it twice, half with and half without. So I've got my gilding flakes, my heat and stick. I've got a reasonably recently re-inked Versamark ink pad. Do remember that, you know, you can re-ink them. So this side is the embossing buddy. You bought one like that in paper chairs. In the, the eraser, yes. They're very, re I mean, I got mine in Smith's, I think. They're readily available. They are, re they're nothing... They're nothing exciting. They're just a white eraser. So we've got this end is with embossing body. This end is without. Heat and stick. As I say, smells very chemical. And I find that you get, it goes everywhere. It's very, very fine powder. Heat and stick is something that's coming in the new catalogue, Pam. So it's like an embossing powder. And I will be showing you exactly what it is any second now. So my trusty cheese board. So this is the end with the um, embossing buddy, which unfortunately we don't do anymore. And this is the end without. So you heat up until it's shiny. And I have to say, I've not been totally successful with this yet you get your gilding flakes and I tend to just drop it in at this point and you get a real mess and then you come back in with your sponge and you can add more of the, the gilding flakes with your sponge. So you can pick them up with your sponge and just dab them on. Whoops, don't do that because then you get it everywhere. But I do find you get a better finish if you actually use a sponge rather than not so this is the end without the embossing buddy sorry with the embossing buddy and this is the end with it and obviously I need to brush as well. So let me grab my brush. Now what they then say is that you reheat. Not convinced, but we'll give it a go.
See, I'm not sure that actually does anything. Might do, I don't know. It's more lively, I don't know, but let's give it a go. Yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's allowing more of the gilding flakes to go on. Do not flick into the, it will go everywhere. And if you've got long hair, tie it back. So let's pop the lid on and get the brush. Brush away any excess again. Do check the back as well. And there we have our gold leaf. So it's a softer look than um, embossing powder. So hopefully, Pam, that's explained what heat and stick is. So it is just a, it's an embossing. And just go rogue and do this. Now, what is a really nice effect? Let me grab yet another piece of black. I've got a suitable sized piece in here. Ooh, that will work. This, this is an effect I really like. Um, and it's going to be one of those ones you either really like or really don't. So we've got our using Tombow. So you can put little blobs, sign, using the heat and stick with a stamp. Versamark ink. This is either going to do your head in or not. Probably use too much Versamark, but we'll go with it. And then we'll do prize draws. Ever get the lid back on my heat and stick. There we go. So heat gun again. Just gonna give this a bit of a blow first. Thank you, Nora. don't really want to drop your card into your gilding flakes. Just saying. So you get a kind of just swoosh look. Now, just to show those of you who joined late, this is the only pot I've got of these. And it's still full. So, decant. I've got gold flakes everywhere now. Oh, I'm not going to lose that bit, thank you. So there we are, gold flakes. But as I say, this is a real kind of just use your, I'm covered in gold now. Um, just 
use your Versamark ink pad heat and stick on top and it's just a kind of squish so prize patrol oh I need to pick something out for the next time don't I so let's let us let us let us oh here's that one oh all that let's use that right so got lots of bits here let me just date this so that I know what I'm doing so 29 12 20 gilding flake is going to attack to attach itself to me apparently so um, designer elements so we've got gold silver copper these are retired um, but that's going to be the prize for today um, the I haven't already shared last week I've just answered your next question how which presumably was about the flakes let nothing done your dull your sparkle absolutely but doesn't really gilding gold flakes don't really go with my nice new jumper this is the jumper my husband gave me as part of my christmas present and it's gorgeous um so yes this is from last week so it's the gangs all mirror that was very popular in celebration last year um and it's you know new in box still still without its labels and everything um so that's this week that's for last week the prize from the week before was a bundle which is the time for tea bundle so it's the stamp set and the spot of tea framelits so this is the one that i'm going to be drawing for today so these are the framelits so you've got labels and you've got um, bits that go with the stamps um, and i am thrilled to be able to tell you that the winner is Nora Kelly. Yay! So, Nora, I'll send this to your home address because um, I've got that. So I will pop that in the post once our post office is open. I will get that off to you. Um, do remember anyone who's in the UK, if you shop with me in December and use the host code, which is on my website, it's on every post of my website, it's on my YouTubes, it's on my Facebook business page. Any order over £50 using the host code, you will be guessing you will get into the draw to win the A Wish for Everything bundle. Um, up in the middle of my computer screen, which is not great. Um, anyway, so that is going to be drawn at the beginning of january um if you want paper or ribbon shares then uh the details of those are on my website again if you've got a uk address uh postage is free um i'll order them on the fifth everything on the fifth assuming everything's in stock um and some things are already getting a little bit dangerous uh stock wise um and then I will also order them up, chop, whoops, chop them up and get them out to you as early as I can. Last date for ordering and paying for these is the 3rd of January. So not a huge amount of time. And that's both ribbon and paper. Uh, this is what a quarter share of paper looks like. So just look at these, aren't they lovely foiled specialty papers? Um, so I will see you next year. Um, as I say, I've got new, a new running schedule for my classes and my events. So the first time I will be back will be on the 3rd of, no, it will be on the 6th of January, I think. I think. Um, so that will be the live kickoff celebration, um, at 3 PM. So join me for that. Um, assuming it isn't after Tuesday next week. I've lost all dates uh, because I will be doing my usual 11 o'clock on a Tuesday. They're going to be shorter sessions, 
more of them. So have a super uh, as much as you can um, new year. And let's hope that we can kick this virus into touch very soon. OK, thank you very much indeed for watching. And I will see you all again, I hope, very soon. OK, bye bye.